Here we are at the Hemisphere Arena in San Antonio, Texas, and this is an interesting match. Nick Bockwinkel is the world heavyweight champion, and this is not a title defense, but he's wrestling against a young wrestler who's probably very new in the business. I'm, I wonder if this is his first territory, Terry Allen, who a couple of years later became Magnum TA in uh, Mid-South and then Mid-Atlantic and was on the way to becoming, uh, and I, I already had become one of the biggest stars in the entire industry when he was uh, felled with an auto accident that ended his career. Actually, uh, I believe Florida was Terry's first, uh, first full-time territory, and this would have been his second. Uh, Terry was very new in the business at this point. Uh, uh, Buzz Sawyer had had a hand in his training, as I recall. Right. And um, Terry was, was destined because of his looks and his athletic ability. He was going to be a superstar and, and turned out to be a superstar faster than anybody had predicted that he might be. Bill Watts was the one who really made him, and then Dusty Rhodes groomed him and took him to, an, to, the, to a, probably even the level up above that. Well, that's right, because uh, when, when uh, Magnum T.A. came to the Mid-South area, he was teamed with Mr. Wrestling 2, who was a veteran and uh, who had, had already become very popular in the area. And, and as, as his young protege, Magnum T.A., uh, was, was a popular wrestler as well, straight off the bat, was a uh, uh, co-holder of the Mid-South Tag Team Championship. And then Mr. Wrestling 2 turned on Magnum TA, jealous of the, the popularity that his young protege had gotten, and, and uh, Magnum had his first uh, singles, um, singles feud with Mr. Wrestling 2. Dusty Rhodes, who was booking for uh, Jim Crockett at the time, had seen Magnum at one of the Superdome shows and decided to bring him to the Carolinas, and that's where he really, uh, once he got on the Superstation TBS and got involved with uh, Jim Crockett Promotions, where he really became a superstar. They gave him actually a, a push very similar to Bill Goldberg. You know, the, the real quick wins for about a year there, and then finally, you know, he was up there uh, wrestling the main guys. You know, that's yeah. where he started wrestling like Ric Flair and people like that. You know, one of the things about watching this match, because, uh, you know, uh, you can see the look of, uh, you know, of Terry Allen right here, who later became Magnum TA. He's got a, he's got a good look. He's got a good physique. And, uh, you know, you can see, like, uh, a reason a promoter would look at him and just go, you know, he's a guy who we could make into a star. This, at this point in time, he was probably about... Um, I'd say 24, 25 years old, maybe. Um, and one of the things, um, and, I, and you, you as someone who's been involved with a lot of training of wrestlers and, and all that, a lot of guys have told me that they think that um, 20 minutes, 15 minutes in the ring with a veteran, you learn more than uh, you can learn in, in a lot of times, you know, a long time in a school, just being in the oh, ring in front of the crowd no with a veteran and with a guy like Nick Bachman. I mean, this, is, this was probably a great educational process for Terry Allen working with, uh, you know, one of the top names in the industry at the time. Exactly, because uh, not only did he get a chance to wrestle here in, in, uh, in the San Antonio area with guys like Bachwinkel, but then when he went to Mid-South, he was in the ring with with Bobby Eaton and Dennis Condry and Ernie Ladd and Hacksaw Butch Reed and, and Mr. Wrestling 2 and then going to uh, to the NWA with Tully Blanchard, Arn Anderson, Ole Anderson, Ric Flair and uh, uh, Magnum matured very quickly and was really well on his way when uh, when the car wreck occurred. Uh, Dusty and, and Magnum had been uh, partners of America's team uh, in a match in Greenville, South Carolina. I believe it was October 20th. I can't remember the exact date. You're pretty close. But uh, October of 1986, and they were coming back from Greenville, South Carolina in, uh, in Magnum's red Porsche. And luckily for Dusty, Magnum had dropped Dusty off at his home and was was uh, uh, I, I don't know whether he was going too fast for conditions. It was raining it was that raining. night. I think he went pretty fast. Uh, yeah. But he was he was basically he slid off the road on uh, very close to his home on Sardis Road in Charlotte and was wrapped around a telephone pole. If it had not been for his tremendous physical condition, uh, the doctor said there was no way that he would have even have survived the crash. As it was, uh, the the neck damage and the spinal damage. They it took almost three hours to pry him out of his car. And the next day, the the front page of the Charlotte Charlotte Observer covered nothing uh, but Magnum TA's car wreck. Uh, the phone calls to the hospital, they had to set up a special uh, phone number at the hospital for phone calls from the fans asking about his condition. Uh, the, the newspaper covered the story for a week. It was it was on every 6 o'clock news program. Um, Magnum was one of the most popular wrestlers in the history of the Charlotte area, and, and people came from as far as Virginia, West Virginia, South Carolina, and, and even a couple of people from Maryland to sit outside the hospital and, and wait for word on his condition. I remember, I guess it would have been probably about a year later in Baltimore at the Crockett Cup, when he actually made an appearance back in the wrestling ring, when he and, he and he walked to the ring on crutches. And you know, I mean, when it first happened, I mean, the idea that he was going to walk, I mean, that was the big thing, was would he ever walk again? And a year later, he did walk to the ring. I mean, he did never wrestle another match. 
Uh, no. The damage was far too severe. You never and and it would have been it would have really would have been impossible. No one could have made a comeback to the ring from that kind of damage. But he did walk again, and he actually was in the business for several years as a television announcer. After that, yes, he you know he he never regained uh, to this day never regained the use of his right arm, uh, never fully regained the use of both legs, and but is able to walk with a cane and and. Uh, later on, after uh, after his broadcasting career was over, he did uh, work in the, in the as a matter of fact in the satellite industry uh, and in construction, uh, putting up satellite dishes, satellite towers, erecting uh, construction uh, broadcasting towers and different types of construction, and and did very well for himself. But uh, he was a he was a future NWA world champion. He was a future superstar that uh, unfortunately made his as a lot of people don't realize he made as major a name in this business as he made and only was a full-time competitor for about four and a half years. Yeah, and his career was actually over at the age of, what, about 27 years old when that happened? 27, 28 years old. Yeah. And here he's hip-tossing Bachwinkle across the ring. And uh, you can see, I mean, again, this is like uh, probably what, about a this, year This a year is his career? rookie year. Yeah, this is his rookie year. Yeah. He might as well be spelling for all it's One of the things that, uh, that was also, you know, one of the... Um, uh, good things about the territorial system, and there are both good and bad things about about the way wrestling was. And it was totally different in, in that era where every area had their own wrestlers, and uh, there were some there were certain wrestlers, and Bachwinkle, of course, being one of them, that toured many different territories as one of the recognized world champions. But most of the wrestlers would work one territory for a couple months, maybe a year, maybe a little longer, go to another one. Now here's the big pile driver, and uh, this could be that's probably is the finish. That is because there was not illegal in Texas. The pile driver not illegal in Texas. The world champion, Nick Bockwinkle, over game young, talented Terry Allen.